Yeah, I'll, I'll... Oh, I thought I was writing on the table. It's just paper. Anyway, so the one I actually did, so we did... The first one we did, we, we made a, a smaller version to try and add together 6 plus 4. So we're going to do 6 plus 4. Again, spoiler alert, it's 10. So 6 in binary is a 4, a 2, and no units. And 4 is, unsurprisingly, a 4, no 2s, no units, right? So we were going to add these together. So the way it works is we had 6 inputs. Three inputs were for the first number we're adding, three inputs were for the second number. So for the first three inputs, we bumped the first one, bumped the second one, but not the last one. And for the next three inputs, we bumped the first one over, we didn't touch the next two. So whether or not you bump them over or don't bump them over, it puts in your zeros and ones in your answer. And so they went into, actually the way the system actually worked was, we had, the way we labeled it is we had, uh, so we called this, we were adding, number A to number B. We had input A1, we had input B1, and then we had A2, B2, and then we had A4, B4. And this time we've just used it for the columns that are going in. And then what actually happened was we had one chain of dominoes that came in, and then it forked up, and then it split and went into both of these and then they carried off into the circuit, and we either filled in or didn't fill in those. And also this lit off and did some stuff over here, and then came in there, and then came in there, and this went into the circuit, and this went into the circuit. And then this, this the, then there's a ridiculous, and a huge, crazy number of, I mean just, I mean, the, in here was dominoes to the power of crazy. I mean, it was just phenomenal. But because we, so for A, we filled in this chain here, and then we filled in that chain there, and then for B, we only filled in that chain there. And so when we set it going, that, those were the inputs that came in, and at the far side, out came four of these, and these were, these were our answers, these were the outputs. That was output units, output twos, output fours, and output eight. And it worked, right? So the dominoes go in, magic happens in the middle, and then this one came tumbling out, and this one here came tumbling out, but the other ones didn't move. Which, and that is our, was our readout of 10. So we had an eight and a two. Uh, the more uh, facetious people watching pointed out it took us an entire weekend and 10,000 dominoes to prove that six plus four equals two plus eight. Jerks. Uh, but we then, we then made a much bigger one, so then we redid it for four-digit inputs, five-digit readout, uh, but that one was marginally less successful. What result did you get for that one? What plus what? Equal? We got the wrong answer. What did you get? Uh, so we did, uh, what were we putting in? We ended up with an, it was meant to be 12, I think we're doing, oh, we're doing seven plus five, so it was seven, plus 5, which in theory should be 12, we got an answer of 30, um, which is my, I mean, the correct answer was in there. I mean, we, we got the correct outputs fell over, but two extra outputs fell over that shouldn't have. And, um, and that was a little bit upsetting, but to be fair, it could have gone wrong in trivial ways. I mean, someone walking by could have bumped the dominoes and set them going, and that would have been just heartbreaking. But it actually went wrong in interesting ways. So two, so we had a timing issue. So you notice I built that long delay line before where I was trying to slow a signal down. And for the one here, the blocking signal got there just in time to stop the other one from coming out. For the one we actually built, unfortunately, one of the blocking signals came in too late. It closed the gate after the signal had already fled. And so the other signal had gone. And then uh, secondly, we had signal bleed. So on a corner, a domino slid out, and you, you can see it, it tumbles across the floor, and then it bumps another chain that shouldn't be moving, and suddenly a phantom signal starts up and goes through. And then, yeah. Matt, as far as I know, the computers we use at home don't have dominoes inside them. How, how much is this what is happening in a computer, and how much have you had to compromise and cheat? Well, this is, it's much slower than your computer. This, uh, so your, your computer would do, because you can measure it in kind of gigahertz, or, or so how many calculations per second it's cranking, and you know, it's doing millions of calculations a second. Ours was, does about three calculations a day, because it takes six hours to balance all the dominoes, which is, I mean, what's that going to be about, what, 40 
microhertz. Not quick, to be fair. And um, is that so, what it is? Forty microhertz. Yeah, it's it's a terrible. The clock speed is just. I mean, we we try and overclock it by having faster dominoes, but it just takes a lot of time to, to set up. However. In terms of the actual circuit, this is what happens. I mean, normally you'd build this with, uh, you know, wires and you'd have components like transistors and, and you know, resistors and all these things. Uh, so instead of having components making decisions, or, or back in the day, vacuum tubes doing decisions with, with, with electrons moving around, we have dominoes falling around. But it's exactly the same concept. In fact, quite nicely, when I did the 10,000 domino version, we were building it in front of the rebuild of one of the first computers that was made at the University of Manchester. And Alan Turing himself wrote that, he had a computer called the, the Mark I, he wrote the, the first operating system to make the Mark I computer work. And you can see all the little, sw the switches you can see are in tied little vacuum tubes, whereas we have the switches are dominoes blocking and not blocking. If all a computer can do is add, you know, ones and zeros and that, if that's all a computer can do down at the base level, how can it do all these amazing things like word processing and computer games and YouTube videos? It's it's true. I mean, I mean, if you wanted to watch a YouTube video on dominoes, it would be horrifically some terrible frame rate. Uh, the resolution is terrible on these things. But however, at the base level, that is all computers do. But once you've got addition, right? If you want to multiply numbers together, that's just repeated addition. So you just do this over and over and over again, and then you have another circuit keeping track of how many times this one's run. And real electronic circuits, you don't have to balance them again. You can just send signals through, you know, in pulses. And so that, 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 that's your clock in the computer, sending things through at regular intervals. And once you've got multiplication, then well, you can then you can fudge that, you can do division. And when you do anything on a computer, at the surface level, you're dealing with words or you're dealing with uh, YouTube videos. But as you know from the fine channel computer file, if you're typing in characters, uh, Unicode or ASCII or whatever's happening is turning what you're typing into binary numbers. And then at the bottom level, everything you do with a computer becomes numbers. Then right at the very, very bottom, the numbers are simply being added. And from everything else builds up from there. It's all about the numbers. It's all about the numbers. In fact, the very first computers, you had to interact directly in the binary. So now we've got all these layers from the binary circle all the way up to the actual graphical interface we have now. But, you know, they've gradually built up over time. Back in the day, you were right at the binary level. And so I got to play with a rebuild of one of the first computers, one in Manchester, and there are actual switches, or uh, you've got one that's got buttons, where you enter ones and zeros to different parts of the register, or whatever, the, the parts of the computer. So you enter your program, you enter your numbers in binary. Uh, thankfully, the second version of the operating system as such that Turing had designed had, an ex had the first of what are now many, many layers, where you could enter your numbers as base 10 numbers, not binary numbers. So that was the beginning of moving away from directly interacting with these. But Turing didn't like that. I got to meet Turing's last student. So he had a PhD student. Unfortunately, as we know, Turing died uh, very early, which is incredibly tragic. And when he died, uh, he had a student who was doing a PhD m using a computer to run the equations that govern uh, uh, the growth of organisms. And it was incredible research. But I, so I got to meet and chat to this guy. And he said Turing got really annoyed when one day he came in and saw someone else using the computer and they were entering the numbers wrong. They were putting them in as base 10. So Turing yelled at them going, no, you've got to do it as binary. And the other guys are like, oh, no, no, we've got a new, you know, we've got a plug in now. We, we installed a mod and now you can enter them as base 10. And Turing didn't like it. So it, for the rest of his life, Turing would always switch back to the old version and do everything directly in binary because he thought you're actually connecting with what the computer's doing and and part of me thinks he I mean I'm all for convenience but it is a shame that now we've kind of lost that connection with what's happening right at the bottom of our computers <laughs>